So on the first day of my campaign, I pledged to do something that no U.S. president has done, but which every U.S. president in recent years, certainly over the last couple of decades, could have done, which is to use U.S. military force, if necessary, to address the Mexican drug cartels, who, yes, are terrorist organizations, and to solve the fentanyl crisis, which is mainly a supply-side-driven crisis of fentanyl crossing our borders and killing 100,000 Americans every year, not just the Americans it kills, but is also responsible for a homelessness epidemic in our country and broader social struggles in our country. Okay, that is a proper use of the U.S. military. One of the objections I've heard is that that would be a violation of international law or at least international norms relating to sovereignty of the neighbor to our south. Well, that's why I said the way I'd like to first approach it is to support the next Mexican president to actually go in and take out the cartels for a fraction of what we spend in Ukraine. We could help the Mexican government get out of the pocket of the cartels, which is where it's living today, and actually independently operate as a sovereign state to take out the cartels that effectively pose a threat to the Mexican government itself. Unfortunately, the you know I think the cartels have a policy of what they call what do they say uh, silver or lead? What does that mean? That means silver to bribe the, the the government officials or lead to shoot them, and they're using both. So what do we have? We have a failed narco state. And I want to be really clear about this. Under the principles of international law, the sovereign government of every nation has a responsibility to control for non-state actors within their borders who create real violations of international law, including through violence, for other states on the global map, for other nations on the global map. That's exactly what's happening with the failed narco state to the south. The Mexican government is neither willing nor able to address the non-state actors, these terrorist organizations, these drug cartels, that are now killing not tens, but now hundreds of thousands of Americans, harming them, certainly, on our side of the border. That forms a case for justified use of military force, okay? And if we're going to use U.S. military force to protect somebody else's border or to take out terrorists on the other side of the planet— we certainly have no similar constraint that ought to apply to doing it to protect Americans inside our own borders. And here's the other objection I hear is that, oh, well, why are you blaming the cartels? They're just supplying what the U.S. is, you know, customers are demanding. That's bunk. You got to look at the facts. Why did the fentanyl crisis actually start? It didn't come out of nowhere. It's supply side driven. Chinese manufacturers, let's call them manufacturers, are sending in raw materials cheaply that expand the profit margins of the cartels. They buy their you know, cost of goods more inexpensively and they still sell them for the same price. That expands the profit margin. And now there's good evidence that actually Chinese people south of our own border, people from China, that have come over to actually manufacture, to make the fentanyl that they view as their next step of an opium war to undermine the United States because they're using actual fentanyl across the southern border, digital fentanyl in the form of TikTok, and, and what I say sometimes is financial fentanyl in the form of national debt. We've grown addicted to China. That's a bigger long-run challenge, but in the short run, there's something we can actually do. We can use the U.S. military to secure our southern border. Don't just build the wall. Build the wall and arm the wall, actually with a military that protects our southern border so it's not a piece of Swiss cheese, which it is today, but also to be able to actually solve the fentanyl crisis. You want to solve problems in America actually solve the problems that are literally killing Americans by the tens and hundreds of thousands. And if our military was created to do something, it was created to do that. And I've talked to people in the military. I mean, it's not like the people who serve in the United States from the DA to the military wouldn't be interested in doing this. Of course they would. It's just that for some reason, the defense establishment views this as an uncouth thing to say. I'm glad to see it's becoming a more popular idea. I see Lindsey Graham proposing legislation now. I see other political candidates uh, carefully um, feeling their way and, and doing their polls to test whether or not this is a popular issue as they dip their toes into saying the same thing. You know, we've seen that happen with my proposal to shut down the Department of Education. Now other candidates are slowly starting to dip their toes into that same water. I think we're now starting to see the same thing with actually using military force to take out the Mexican drug cartels. What I say is great. The more candidates that are talking about the right things, the better it's going to be for the country. The person who leads the country ought to be the person who led the way in actually shaping these debates. But forget the electoral politics of it. This is just something that needs to get done. And I wanted to address these objections that somehow it's a violation of international law or somehow that this isn't going to help solve the fentanyl crisis. Those arguments are bunk. And I think it, it merits to be, you know, it's worth actually calling that out for what it is. I want to advance these ideas on the debate stage, and I need your help to do that. I think we will elevate the debate in the GOP to a level that has not been seen in modern history. Just make a $5 donation. 
heck, maybe even just a $1 donation, small dollar, tiny dollar, whatever it is, at Vivek2024.com, V-I-V-E-K 2024.com. And that will make sure that we make this year about advancing the actual pro-American agenda rather than some boring biographical brawl. Thanks a lot.